everybody, I was watching a documentary. Don't worry about that. Hey, um, I just had a phone conversation with Scott Kurtz, and uh, in the conversation we were talking about how we use our Wacom tablets, and it got me to thinking that um, it might be helpful for me. I, maybe this won't help anybody. Maybe it will, so I'm going to do it. If it does, great. If it doesn't, sorry. I guess you can exit YouTube now, <laughs> or Flickr, or wherever I put this. Uh, I'm going to show you how I use multiple monitor setups with a Wacom Cintiq and how I'm able to best use that workspace uh, when I'm drawing and stuff. So this may be helpful to a few of you out there that maybe own this and are looking for a better way. And maybe you're doing something better than me, so if you are, email me let me know. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm looking at uh, my, my uh, regular screen, okay? So there's my keyboard, my mouse. This is my regular display, my main display I use for for everything. There's Twitter. You can see Twitter. Hello everybody in Twitter. Um, when I run, for example, Photoshop, hold on a sec, make sure I'm zoomed out, uh, which is right down here. As you can see it opens up. Um, I, I'm, this example is for a Mac, cool background by the way, this, but the same thing would really apply to a PC. So you've got your menu bar, as normal and all that sort of stuff and, and the things that you use most down here. And this is great for when you're just doing work that requires your mouse and so you're using your main display to to fiddle about and do your thing. But let's say you want to use your Wacom Cintiq, which is over here with a picture of Colossus on it as my background, which I think is really cool. I don't know who drew that, but pretty awesome. Um, some say the way to do it is to mirror your displays and if we did that, I'll show you what happens. So let's go up to our display preferences, and we go turn on mirroring, and here's what we get. We get a big beep, 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 and then it finally figures itself out. Now you're mirroring the lowest resolution. So what I have here now is a Cintiq with, with everything in place, although some of it needs to be moved around. But that's now my essentially my main display, and this is mirroring everything. The problem with that is the big system, and you can't really tell from this video, but the big monitor is showing it at the resolution, the native resolution of the Cintiq. And that's not good, because the maximum resolution on the 30 inch should be much higher than this. So, uh, And it's also stretched, because the the, the uh, aspect ratio is different. So right now we're running 16 by, 1600 by 1200 on both, because we're forced to. But again, see, we're getting we're getting a mirrored setup. And that is one way to do it. I'm not saying this is the worst way. This is just one of the ways to do it. Uh, so let's turn off mirroring. Go back to normal. Uh, so now we're back to normal. Back on the main display. The other display has nothing on it. Um, now, uh, if you if you wanted to do another way, you could go to your display preferences, and you could say, "All right, my." new main display under arrangement is going to be the smaller screen which is the Cintiq and you can actually grab the top menu bar thing here and stick it over here and that makes that the main display. By doing that as you can see this screen is now my secondary display, Cintiq is now my main display. That is one way to do it but it's not a very quick and efficient way. What I'm hoping is somebody will come up with a way to, to switch this back and forth in a very quick sort of macro way but I'm not even convinced even that's the best way. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is what I think is the best way, back to the regular display. Um, so we have Photoshop open. Let's say we need to do a comic. I'll open the most recent one. Uh, let's see here. The Rubik's Cube joke from today. Now as you can see when I open that, it's going, oh it's my backup drive just kicked in. Okay, so I've got the main screen brought up the comic. So there it is in all its glory. Um, if I hit F, I can fill the whole screen with it. So there it is. Uh, that's the entire image. Now, as you can see, I still have my menus here. If I want to use that over in the other screen, uh, I grab the top of it, and I physically, let's go over to the other screen, I physically move it over here with my mouse. So I drag it as if that monitor's next door. I know some of this is rudimentary for some of you. I'm just trying to explain this so everyone can get where I'm at. So there it is. That's great. And as you can see, there's you know ways for me to you know come over here and oh, this is hard. Hold on, without both hands. Anyway, you can't really see me doing it, but I'm manipulating it on screen. But the problem is all my menus, layers, palettes, and crap are over here. So what I did is I did I rearranged all my palettes and I saved that workspace. 
the regular one is called Chode. Don't ask me why. But I saved the new workspace as Wacom. And when you see me click that, you'll see that they disappear from here. Gone. And they moved over here. So now all my menus, all my palettes, and they're actually in a modified layout as far as what I use and how I use it uh, for the comic. Now I have everything pretty much at my fingertips. So as you can see, the way I sit, I now have to shift over to the other monitor to do that work. But the problem is, because a lot of what you do in Photoshop is shortcut key related, I'm typically having to go back over here and hit a key or whatever. And that's still true to some extent, but the Cintiq's kind of nice because it gives you these keys that you can make shortcuts. That top small one you see there is brush, or erase rather. The bottom small one is brush. Uh, the very bottom one is the hand control where you can kind of sort of move the screen around with your, uh, you know, like a, a little virtual hand. Uh, and the long one is an undo key. Over here, bottom key, whoops, where is it? Bottom key is zoom. Long key is save, like quick save. And the top two are brush sizers to increase or decrease the size of my brush. Uh, so 90% of what I'm doing while I draw is right here at my fingertips. So I don't have to shift around or move back to the keyboard very often. When I do, it's to hit things like the letter G for the paint bucket, or the letter L for lasso, or M for selection tool, uh, or W for the uh, smart selector tool, um, or some of these modifiers like Alt, Shift, and whatnot. Uh, so that still happens where I shift over there, but again, it's sort of just within reaching distance and it isn't that big a deal. Check out Jeff. Hello! Um, so the nice thing about it is when I'm done sort of working over here and I'm like, well, I need to do some finished text work and it's easier to do that on the big screen, I literally grab it, I move it back over to the main screen, I change it from Wacom back to Chode, and suddenly I have everything I need right here and I can do the finished work on the comic. Um, I'd love to hear your suggestions on what you do and how you do it uh, for just workspace management, but this has been pretty good for me. This is, you know, I've enjoyed the way I do it. And um, it was always interesting to hear what others do. It was interesting to hear what Scott did today. I'd love to hear your feedback as well.